case number two. Well, case number two, we're talking about k minus l is not a multiple integer of capital M. Well, in that case then, equation seven become what? Well, you remember, according to equation seven, in case you forgot, equation seven, at that time we say A is equal to summation on small n go from zero to capital N minus one, E raised to the power I, K minus L, time 2 pi over capital N times small n. That is equation 7 that I talked to you earlier. However, that equation over there, instead of multiply n with that is a power, that is the same thing as putting this one in there. So they are the same. So, so in other words, the term that you have in here, including the power of small n, is the same thing as this term in here. Okay? So now we have equation 10. Now if you look carefully at equation 10, now we define a new notation. And the new notation, we say like this. Look at this parenthesis here. Look at this parenthesis here. Everything in that parenthesis, we call it is equal to a, small a. You see? So whatever the parenthesis there, you define as equal to small a. All right? So that is the definition of small a. Then from this definition of small a, you can go from here to there by using, again, the so-called Euler identity. Euler identity. Identity. Using this Euler identity. Then we can express E raised to the power I time K minus L time 2 pi over capital N. We can express that in terms of cosine and sine as I show you in equation 11. So now if you took a look at equation 11, you have to be very careful. In this case number two, remember k minus l is not, is not a multiple integer of n. And therefore, you cannot say that this tie term equal to zero. You cannot say that. It is not equal to zero. Okay? And also, you, you, you cannot make a conclusion that cosine of this term is equal to one. Actually, it is not equal to one. And the reason is because k minus l in this situation, case number two, it is not a multiple integer of capital N. Okay? So you cannot say that anymore. So the small a should be given by equation 11, like I show you over there. Now let's continue. Like I told you before, the small value of a cannot be equal to 1 because k minus l is not a multiple integer of capital N. I think I told you previous slide. Well, let me see, I will, I will check it. You see, the small value of A, it is not equal to 1. And the reason is because K minus L is not a multiple integer of N. All right? So, for that reason, then equation 10 that you have earlier, let's see equation 10 that you have earlier, can be expressed as equation 12. Why? Let's take a look at equation 10. 
You see? You look at equation 10, what do you have? Summation. And then inside this bracket will be small a raised to the power n. That's what you have from equation 10. And that is exactly what I told you right here. See? Capital A equal to summation of small a raised to the power n. So that's what we got, equation 12. Now, the definition of the small a is given. Don't forget, the definition of small a is given according to equation 11. So, how do you figure out equation 12? Well, the way to do it is, if you look at any mathematical handbook, then the answer for summation of small a raised to the power n, it could be either equal to n or it is equal to this complicated formula here, depending on, depending on the value of small a is equal to 1 or not. What I'm trying to tell you is that if a is equal to 1, small a equal to 1, then this summation here is equal to capital N according to some formula in the mathematical handbook. On the other hand, if A is not equal to 1, then the value of capital A should be given by this formula right there, which is 1 minus A raised to the power capital N divided by 1 minus A. Well, in our situation for case 2, we are in this category. And therefore, we have to use the formula which say capital A is equal to 1 minus small a raised to the power N divided by 1 minus small a. And that is exactly what I show you in equation 15 where capital A is given by that formula. Now, in case you forgot, if you remember, in case you forgot, okay, remember the definition of the small a. Small a, I believe we define at that time as e raised to the power i times k minus l times 2 pi divided by capital N. At that time, we define the small a like that. Therefore, if you raise this guy to the power N, and you also raise this guy to the power N, then you can cancel this term in here, and what you have left is just this term right here, which is represent small a raised to the power n. Okay, so now we already got to equation 15. The last thing probably we're going to do is we express e raised to that power using the so-called Euler identity again, using Euler identity, Euler identity. We can express e raised to the power i minus time k minus l times 2 pi in terms of cosine and sine, as shown in equation 16. Now, we argue this way, k is an integer, l is also an integer, and therefore, no matter what happened to k minus l, sine of that angle, k minus l times 2 pi, is always equal to 0. For the same reason, we argue, because, because uh, k is an integer, l is an integer, so no matter k minus l equal to what, cosine of some integer times 2 pi, 
that term is always equal to 1. So for that reason, e raised to the power i k minus l2 pi is always equal to 1. So because of that reason, this guy is equal to 1, OK? Because I say C equation 16 that I just told you. Therefore, you can see capital A is equal to 0, because 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, OK? So we just proved to you that for case number 2, which is uh, k minus l is not a multiple integer of capital N, the capital A is equal to 0. On the other hand, for case number 1, for case number 1, when k minus l is a multiple integer of capital N, then A is equal to capital N. So if you combine the two cases together, if you combine the two cases together, case 1 and case 2, if you look together, you will see the capital A is equal to n plus 0, which is equal to n. So now we say A is equal to n. Okay? Now before we talk, actually I want to remind you one more thing, so that in the future it will be easier. At this moment, we say capital A is equal to capital N, which means if you go back to the equation that we talked to you earlier, okay, this value of capital A, where did we define it? We define capital A. You see, if you look at back into equation 7, the capital A we prove to you, after consider both possibility, capital A should be equal to capital N. So please remember that. So in the future, when I talk about the next uh, couple of lectures, that we, you have to memorize about that fact. Okay. So basically, that is the end of this lecture. Is here's the acknowledgement.